because this is something I, I, I've been thinking about for a long time. And after studying government programs for probably 30, 40 years now, and uh, helping millions of people, you know, use the government, and, you know, just seeing it. And that's actually, I started all this kind of work, you know, helping rich people, you know, because <laughs> that's where the money is. Sort of like Willie Sutton, the bank robber, said, why'd you rob bank? rob banks, Willie, because that's where the money is. <laughs> oh, that's a stupid question. But, uh, you know, it, 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 it's, what's going on now sort of drives home what I sort of uh, thought about for a long time, you know. And, you know, I, I really consider myself middle of the road, you know, because I, I think having an ideology, you know, like being a big Republican or being a big Democrat or, or having any kind of ideology, I mean, sort of, that's almost like gluttony. And you can't have an independent, you know, decision or whatever it is. So I try to stay a little bit non-political. I certainly have, have feelings and uh, uh, viewpoints and stuff like that. Uh, but, I mean, I don't know what works. I mean, <laughs> listen, listen, I've written 100 books and only 10 made money. So I know I'm wrong 90% of the time. So that means you, you have to take data in, you know, uh, to see things. <laughs> I've been married twice. I've been divorced twice. So there's two times I go, oh, this is it. Yeah, I've been wrong again. <laughs> so I, I, I've wrong so many times in life, you know. Uh, so that's why to make a decision, if you go, you know, just on ideology, man, you're not really looking at the uh, subject well enough or whatever. I mean, there's all kind of tools in life to solve problems, yeah. <laughs> and, and some are good for some tools and some are good for other tools. You know, I hate to be a lawyer who sees, you know, a legal problem in anything, you know. And, and like lawyers, you got to know when to use them. Not to see a legal problem, you know, for anything. So now what I see, you know, Obamacare. Not Obamacare, but the repeal of Obamacare. You know, I've been looking at that because, you know, health care is one of the most important things in our country. And I, and I still don't understand why we spend twice as much on health care than any other country, you know, developed country in the world. And we get shittier results. So <laughs> that should be the question. Why does that happen? Not how to do it, but uh, away from that uh, issue, which I think is the real question about health care. What I was curious about is looking at, at the repeal that, that the um, uh, Republicans have now, looking at the details from what I could see, and, and tell me if I'm wrong. You could read this, can't you now? Okay, so the repeal of the health care, uh, the repeal of Obamacare. This is what I see in the details. If I'm wrong, let me know because I, <laughs> I make a lot of mistakes. I only got a, I flunked English in college too. So, uh, and, and having 90% of my book ideas fail <laughs> is enough to call me something. But looking at the data and everything, I, I see this uh, happening. Okay, now, over 10 years, the new plan, the repeal of Obamacare, is going to save America $337 billion, okay? So we're going to save $337 billion, you know, uh, by repealing Obamacare and, and using the new Trump care, I guess we're going to call it. Okay, and how do we get all that money back, you know? Okay, here's how we do it. Uh, we cut Medicaid by $800 billion, okay? Now, what does that do, okay? Well, when you cut $800 billion, what happens? They say 24 million people are going to lose health insurance, okay? So we're going to save a lot of money there. And if you're not familiar with what Medicaid is, that's not for the old farts. That's for low-income people so that they don't have to go to the emergency room when they're sick and things like that. So low-income who can't afford health care, you know, that's what Medicaid is for you know, and children and all that. So they're going to cut $800 billion off of that. But, you know, the, the downfall is that we lose 24 million people, lose insurance. Now, the other thing where we get, look what happens in that, in the repeal, this is in the repeal. So this is in the, you know, Trump care program. We're going to give the top 2% income owners in America $247 billion. Okay, that's part of the health care bill. Now, what the hell are we giving these people money for? <laughs> it's a tax break. You know? So we're giving them $240 billion, and that's the top 2% two, two that's like 3,000 people. 
Yeah. <laughs> so now we have 3,000 people are going to get a bonus of $90,000. Okay. Now we're solving a healthcare problem, right? <laughs> this is what's amazing. We're trying to solve the healthcare problem. But hey, along the way, why don't we give 3,000 people <laughs> you know, $90,000 a piece? And that only costs you know, $274 billion. But boy, when you see $274 billion, that's as much as we're saving, right? I mean, we're, we're saving $337 billion. That's supposed to be the big savings we're doing. But we're giving almost that much away to 3,000 people. And who are the 3,000 people? They certainly aren't the people who need health care, are they? No, they're the 2,000 3, richest people in America. Get it? How the hell does that happen? <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know how they have the balls to even say this. I rarely see this in the press. There's a few little items now, you know, talking about that. But the, that's what's going on. I mean, that, that's, it, it's beyond my comprehension how they could get away with this. You know, but they do, you know, uh, and they call it health care. No, so everything, see, if you're an ideologue, so all you're looking at is one thing. You're calling it anything you want. <laughs> I'm fixing health care. No, I'm, I'm giving these people $300 billion. You know. and, and, you know, I, 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 I think, I believe, and again, tell me if I'm wrong. Yeah, <laughs> this is what's going on in our country is that you know we're growing as a country okay now the gdp that is our growth how much income that people are making in the united states total how much how much money is the u.s making okay they call that gross domestic product gdp okay so how much are they make how, how much is america growing growing we're growing maybe not as fast percentage wise as other people but we're still growing and here's the here's a chart on that and this is from Fed blog, not, not <laughs> Fred blog. Now that's, you know, it's so funny. It's, it's, it's Fred blog, but Fred blog is the Federal Reserve Board. <laughs> I can't get over the color Fred blog. But if you could see those lines well enough. So the red line on top is the growth in America. We grow every year. Just how much was it? 1%, 2%, 3%. You know, and now you see the big dip up here. That's the recession, you know, that went down and we, we took a bump down and then start growing again. But look at this blue line, okay? That's flat on the bottom. That's the average income. This is the average money that America is making, average for every American. They're making this and it's going up, 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 up. This is the average payroll for every American. It, it hardly moved. What, what is it? You know, it, it, it's still about uh, $20 an hour, average payroll for workers, you know. Uh, so that's it. So wages are stuck. You know, this is 30, 40 years. They're stuck. But America is growing. <laughs> that's right. What does a making America great again really mean? I'm, I'm a little confused there. I, I thought it was for all the workers here, you know. So maybe that's what they have in mind. I don't know. He's just starting out down here. But look what's happening. But when you see this, now I don't know if this, <laughs> is this making America grow again? Or is it the same fat cats growing again? You know? <laughs> that's what I got. Why does it seem to me that all the growth in America is going to little people? Now, a few number of people. And there was a study done by a professor out in uh, uh, University of California. Uh, who show this a little hard, too hard to read, but uh, it shows that the growth rate, uh, everything that we grew from the recession till now, you know, 2007 till now, you know, 95% of that money went to the top 1%, not even the 2%, 1%. So all the growth, yeah, <laughs> anything we're growing seems to go to just a few people and the rest of the people, their lives are stuck, you know. And that's why, how do we get out? I know the, why that happens or whatever. But see, to me, what it seems that if you can come to Washington, learn how to use Washington and change the system, you could lobby, you know, lobby Congress and get 200, you know, and get a $90,000, you know, pay raise for 3,000 people just a stroke of a pen.
You didn't have to work for it. You didn't have to do it. Sure, you had to work for it. You had to go to dinner with these people, right? Take them golfing. Yeah, that's a lot of work. You don't believe how hard that work that is, man. You think anybody could do that? <laughs> what the hell are they contributing? Talking about, you know, uh, uh, what do they call that when they're, you know, fighting class discrimination, not class, you know, the, uh, the rich are fighting the poor or something like that. You know what, that's right. If someone spent their life trying to take that money that, that, that we're creating, that wealth in the country, and giving it only to a small percentage, I mean, to me, what, what, what may happen is that the rest of the country doesn't want to work anymore. Shit, why do I want to do this anymore? <laughs> Working my butt off, making it better, and somebody else is getting it all. And it's the people who are taking people to lunch in Washington that are making that. Yeah. That's why it's so easy now. It seems like the easiest game in town is don't go marketing. Don't do a good job. You know, don't start a hard business. Figure out how to get a law passed. Yeah. <laughs> and that's how you make millions in this country is getting a law passed. Look at the financial services industry. They're, they're, <laughs> they're perfect at this, right? Now, the financial services industry, their income has grown exponentially since the 80s, okay? They now represent like 25% of all profits in, corporate profits in America come from the financial services industry, 25%. They only employ 4% of the workforce. So you have 4% of the workforce, you know, getting 25% of all the profits in America. <laughs> Now, that's some smooth-talking suckers, aren't they? <laughs> that's right. You could get the law changed to make things legal. That's why I think, but we have to have, you know, so everybody, well, it's legal. You know, I don't pay any taxes. Well, it's legal. Yeah. Well, what does that mean? Is it moral? You know, uh, it, it's legal to meet, hit my son or whatever. No, that's still immoral, even if they made it legal, right? So why is it legal yeah, to not pay taxes? Nobody else could do anything in the world. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's not, that's not really a community spirit or thinking about America first. Who the hell's thinking about America first? Yeah, America first, I mean, think, to me, is thinking about something bigger than you. Yeah, and it seems people are coming to town thinking about them. You know, and it's not this administration, it's the other administration. That's what we do. It, you know, it, it, it seems everybody's trying to feather their own nest, and, and it keeps going. But who gets hurt? is the average person, you know, and this line here, you know, is to me just, just too obvious, you know, that whole spread is all the wealth we've created, and it's not going to workers, none of it, the last 30 years and not at my, it'd be different if we were in trouble, okay, because we all had a pitch together, if we're in trouble, we're in a war, we're in a recession, we're in the, but no, we're growing, and it's not going to the average person at all, you know, so how does that happen? I think the, you know, it's easy to come and rig the system. <laughs> yeah. and, and like if you're a business, if you're a business and looking for sales, why go out and try to figure out how to solve someone's problem when I could come to Washington and pass a law <laughs> and make you give me money? Yeah, you know, like the for-profit universities. Well, there's a law you know, <laughs> that they're living off. The for-profit, like Phoenix, all these kind of things. You know, they get 90% of their money comes from government, but with no responsibility. In other words, they convince you to get a government loan, give me the money, and I'll, I'll, I'll pretend I teach you, <laughs> and you're going to get a good job, <laughs> and you don't, and you still owe the government the money. I got the money because I'm the school, right? And that's it. So in other words, I come to town to make sure I could do that so you, somebody else could take government money and give it to me instead of me having to figure out how to make a great product that people want to come here, you know, and they're going to pay their own dollars to do that. But no, hey, I'm going to show you how to get money from somebody else to pay me, you know. And wow, see, that's what they do. I mean, that's what a lot of healthcare is this, right? They come to town and, and show you how to get the government to pay for you know, your prescription drugs. They're, they're going to give you a, 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 a subsidy to pay for healthcare, you know, but you're giving it to the business who, got the, who lobbied to get that subsidy to give to them so you could have healthcare. You know, just think of every penny was coming out of your pocket. You know. uh, it, it, it's bizarre. I mean, there's no easy fix or whatever, but I, I, I'm just, 
you know, just can't get over the balls of these people saying they're finishing fixing health care by giving three hundred billion dollars almost. That's the same amount as they're saving, they say. They're saving the government three hundred billion and they're gonna give another three hundred billion <laughs> to these rich people. Wow, aren't we great legislators? <laughs> We're going to solve all our financial problems. It's easy. We just give the money to the rich people. Right? And they're the people who complain about giving money to poor people, right? It's a, oh, that's where it comes from. We can't take the money from the rich or poor and give it to the rich, I guess. I don't know. I mean, it, it's cer certainly more complicated than that. But it, 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 <laughs> it's true. How could, how could that lie? You know? Check it out. if you think. This is from a Forbes article. Forbes. I mean, that's a big right-wing thing. You know, as a conservative, I didn't get it some, yeah, you know, a left-wing thing kind of stuff. The New York Times or whatever. No, Forbes magazine had this analysis, and it's really it's from think tanks that spend a lifetime doing this kind of stuff. You know, uh, and that's it. I mean, like the uh, to me, it's like franchising is another one. The SBA. You know, oh, we help the little guy. Okay. Well, here's what. Now, what happens is the rich people take advantage of it. Okay, what they do, they say, okay, if you want to start a franchise, you tell, hey, you want to buy my franchise? Okay, it's $300,000, okay? Okay, but then I tell you, you could go to the SBA and get a loan <laughs> to buy my franchise. Yeah. And then you get a loan for the SBA, buy my franchise, and the franchise goes belly up or whatever. No, I don't care. I got your $300,000. You have to pay it back. You went belly up. <laughs> wow, isn't that great? So if you learn the system like that, you come down here to Washington, right? <laughs> Get a law change, and then everybody throws you money, and you don't have to worry about it. They're stuck with it. Not only the taxpayer, but also the poor individual like that. And it's all because I think it's just people finagle in the system, you know, and we don't have enough something, you know, to stop that. But uh, I think more people should know about it. And that's, why I, that's what gives me no guilt in trying to tell people how to take advantage of the government. Man, <laughs> the biggest people who do that yeah, <laughs> are the richest people in the country. You think any tax, I mean, they, they spend millions of dollars on, on, on uh, accountants to figure out how to screw the government, right? Legally, as they say. What the hell legally? What about morally, you know? Why shouldn't they pay their, their fair share or whatever? And what's a fair share? I mean, that, that's an argument, I guess, that we could all make or whatever. And that's besides the point. So that's why I'm trying to show, particularly people need this stuff. That's why, I mean, it's such a joy for me to say, hey, you know, you don't have a lobbyist, but you know, I could show you 150 programs in your neighborhood for buying a house or fixing up a house or whatever, you know. There's like 150, but see, it's not only one place, and you don't, you can't go and lobby for it, yeah. But you have to use the system for it, and that's what I do. Is that I put together these packages, yeah, for for uh, real estate or buying a house or whatever to show you 150 places. That's at the state. Here's the office at your city. Here's the office at your county. Here's a, a nonprofit organization that gets it too, you know. Uh, and very few of them are dot coms, you know. Um, because it, I guess it's peanuts for them. They, they, they want to make bigger money, <laughs> like in the finance services industry. We're starting a business. Yeah. I mean, that's what's so exciting to me. I mean, I used to go to these same small business uh, offices and get help and information and money uh, that's really set up for small businesses, and I, my Fortune 500 clients would take advantage of them. You know. uh, it's legal, yeah, but they could pay for it. Yeah. And that's what's hurting. And something like health care is too serious for people. I mean, that's people's life. You know, health. I mean, what's to me, what's wrong with this country is our health problems, you know. Oh, whatever. Uh, it's important. So I, I don't know what else to do about it, except trying to teach people what the system is. Trying to, you know, at least let people know there's no shame in using the system. It's there. Yes, it's complicated. But look at these people are spending careers. You know, why should they get a normal job? They could come down here and, and get you know, $100,000 just by changing a line in a law. <laughs> That's worth 3000 of them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it, it's, it's complicated. It may not be right. I don't know what's right or wrong a lot of times. 
you know, most stuff is gray, but it's reality. And what I'm trying to show, and, the, and there are real programs to help you do things in life, whether it's education, whether it's um, starting a business, whether it's home, whether it's paying expenses and bills. And that's what I'm trying to specialize in, showing people where they are so they could live better in life and solve those problems, you know, and plan for the future. Right now, boy, you know, you're trying to get a normal job, and that means staying right where you are, it looks like to me. You know, that's why you may as well have fun doing it. <laughs> so, so, you know, doing something you really enjoy is, is better than being in mud and can't even lift up a foot to get anywhere. Oh, there's so much to do, though, and there's so many ways to do it. <laughs> and there's options. See, that's the other thing. Don't think there's only one way and you do Now we have the Internet to do stuff and screw the, uh, the people here. Uh, the Internet does things, you know, that, that people are raising money on the Internet even <laughs> instead of having elected officials do it. You need to park down the cor corner. You don't have to lobby. You know, no, you, you learn how to start up a crowdfunding site and the people who want to kick in money and start a park, you know. <laughs> you want to start a business? No, you don't even have to go to the SBA. You know, you... you, you, you for free, you start up a website and, and find, you know, a hundred people that think this is a great idea and want to be part of it, you know. That's, see, there's other things. That's what's sort of democratizing. I mean, what's neat now, and particularly jobs, okay, that's, that's now what's happening on the Internet and jobs. I mean, look, just think of the biggest hoteler, you know, for hotels in the world called Airbnb. They're the biggest hotel chain in the world now. They don't own a single hotel. But there's a million people making money off of it, right? <laughs> okay, the biggest taxi cab driver business in the world now, Uber. They don't own a single taxi. But there's a million people making money out of it, right? <laughs> or, <laughs> listen to this, the biggest value of... of a uh, retail store is Alibaba. That's a website in China. I use it a lot myself. They don't have any inventory, and they're the biggest retail operation in the world. <laughs> and actually, Alibaba was here talking to uh, Trump, saying how he's going to create a job for a million people. A million! But they're not jobs. They're you selling your stuff on Alibaba. So they're not traditional jobs, say, like this, that are going nowhere. You know, these are other things. It's difficult, it's something new you have to learn, but it's there. That's, you see, to me, where the opportunity. Or Facebook. That's the biggest media empire now. Bigger than Wall Street Journal, bigger than anything you can think of for media. They don't create an ounce of content. They don't create anything. It's the people that do it. See, so all this now is coming down to the average person more, and you could, we could take advantage more of, uh, of what's going on and, and not have to be a fat cat lobbyist to, to screw the, the rest of the country to get your $275 billion from people who need med <laughs> medicine care or whatever. Oh, isn't life fun? <laughs> oh, great. Well, thanks again for putting up for me. I'm sorry I was so uh, philosophical or uh, whatever that was. I'm sure I'll, I'll hear from it. Tell me if I'm wrong where I am. I, I'm really you know, uh, interested, you know, where my thinking is stupid <laughs> and just having my loved ones tell me that. <laughs> I'd like to hear it from strangers, too. <laughs> But yeah, we're all wrong a lot, you know, and, and that's that's the important part of life. It's realizing you're wrong. That's why. I mean. So that's why you you realize most of us are wrong most of the time. You, you take a baby step and figure it out. Take another baby step and figure it out. That's what life is about. Not knowing the future. Nobody knows. It's stupid. That's awfully. Especially now, things are changing so fast. Nobody can possibly know. Yeah. So so you keep hanging in there, you know, and, and trying it and guessing and failing. Get out there and fail. Just try new shit no matter what it is. If the, old, the only thing you have to know is that the old shit ain't working anymore. So stop it. You don't know what to do. That's okay. Just try anything. Anything is better than the old stuff. Because <laughs> that will lead you to something that you never even thought about. 
And that's the important thing. Then that's, you're growing. Yeah. And that's what keeps us on. Look, I'm 73 or something like that. I forget already. Oh, man, if I didn't have something I think was important to do and I had no idea how to do it, man, I'd be complaining like everybody else. You know, but no, that's boring. <laughs> I think they'd go down to Florida and die to do that. You know, ah, you just keep contributing till you die. To me, the magic is how much can you give till you die? So let me know what you think.